Paul Higgins, welcome back to Australian Musician. Thank you, Greg. It's lovely to have you here. Uh, we spoke about two years ago, uh, or maybe three even, during COVID. Um, like many music projects over the last few years, uh, you were building the studio during COVID. Um, Wasn't much else to do. How you, you were unsure of when you could fully open up. Um, how much of a delay did COVID cause? Um, well, as, as like a lot of people say, it's a lot, you know, it's very much like Groundhog Day. You'd start and then you'd have to stop and then you start and then, you know, you'd just get bookings again and then another lockdown would happen. So I'd have to cancel those and, uh, you know, and then by the time you got started, then, you know, people weren't ready just to go straight back into recording. You'd, you'd have to make bookings and people make plans and then those plans would be ruined because another lockdown would come along. So, you know, you really never got back. Uh, and, and, and since COVID, um, you know, there's, uh, you know, we thought COVID was finished, and then it was Omicron, and then there was other things, and 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 since then, the music industry has still been highly affected by, you know, the money that people lost, and and trying to get people back on track and get the momentum that that's been lost in the process. Yeah, um, uh, yourself and Trevor are associated with Studio Fifty Two, the old studio in Collingwood. Yes. Um, this one's Empire Studios. Uh, is the plan to supersede that name, Studio Fifty Two, completely? <laughs> yeah. I um, mean, well, Empire Music Studios is actually the company name. Um, so when we moved here from Collingwood, we thought, oh well, it's time to uh, have a new branding and and um, and just use the company name. So. You know, Studio 52 was originally named after a, a cassette, which was a 52-minute studio-grade cassette. So obviously, cassettes are sort of out of the out of the you know business a long time ago. So yeah, we thought it was a time for a change. Uh, obviously, there's so many people who know us as Studio 52, and we keep getting surprised when people you know you know we hear people say, "Oh, I'm at Studio 52," and you think, "No, you don't. We were at Empire Music Studios." But you know, people just stick with it. So. As I discussed with Paul, this new studio was built during COVID. Uh, it must have been a very anxious time for you. It was um, a very strange experience. We we uh, worked really hard. I uh, stayed back at uh, Collingwood for a year while Paul moved here and supervised all the building and all the design. And um, uh, so basically got here you know, as soon as the first studio was finished and I could move in and it was in between a sort of like the schools period. So it was uh, no problem me coming here over and moving the whole business here. And as the second sort of studio was built, which we needed to do the schools again, finally got that finished. And literally we had the open day, the day they closed Melbourne. And so nobody came and we were like, oh no, yeah, it was was a very strange feeling and they shut us down, they kicked us out and uh, as everybody knows, Victoria was probably the strictest of, of all states and uh, I wasn't even allowed to come in just to do editing on my own or, you know, I rang the government and said, look, you know, this is the real definition of isolation. I mean, <laughs> there's nothing. They said, no, you know, different to somebody wanting to go into their office, you know, you can't. Uh, but we were allowed to uh, do keep building so the main studio which we didn't have sort of scribed in for a few more months because we wanted to get obviously the business off the ground and start making money we just had no option but to plow on and uh, build this sooner than we wanted which turned out to be a blessing I mean you know now it's done and it's finished and uh, you know we're probably a year ahead of schedule on that so that's been wonderful. How much research went into the design of this studio? Did you look at other studios and sort of pick the the good things about them? Yes, uh, definitely. Um, you know, I, I was the the chief person involved in the design of things. Uh, obviously, we've had a fair bit of experience building different studios at Collingwood, um, but that was always. Um, fraught with, you know, the difficulty of building with what we had, whereas here was a blank, you know, canvas. Uh, we had, you know, uh, lots of height. We had lots of options here, whereas Collingwood, we were always working within low ceilings and, and you know, it was essentially a, uh, a shop with a, a factory on top but had a lot of limitations. So here it was much more fun and we were able to build the studios we wanted to build. Um, but, yes, I looked at... Um, 
every other studio around the world. It's, you know, I looked at, just spent hours on the internet uh, looking at pictures of studios and what I liked and what I didn't like. This, um, you know, different architectural, different acoustic, you know, treatments, all sorts of different things, particularly when building this studio, Studio A, because it's a lot bigger than I've ever, anything we've ever built before. And it was also built with the idea of acoustically being able to record things like orchestra. So, you know, that's a lot different than recording a rock band. Uh, so, yeah, I had to take into account all of that acoustic sort of, inf you know, variation. So how many rooms are there in this facility? There's three main studios. There's... Um, well, you know, Studio One, which is about the size of most boutique studios, or even a bit bigger, and the Studio Two, which is quite large, which is um, suitable for like a large jazz, you know, band, like an eight-piece, ten-piece band. Um, and then there's Studio A, which is this one we're sitting in, which is suitable for you know an orchestra. It also doubles as a, a live venue. We've also have a production suite and a photography and artwork studio so uh, so that makes three, five I suppose all together. Um, as you say uh, the, the large studio was also a venue um, I've attended one of the, the gigs there and it's in an impressive room. And you where enjoyed did, that uh, you enjoyed that show? Yeah so Good. where did the idea come from to put on live performances? Well you know again I mean everything to do with studios now you've got to be um, uh, multi-purpose um, and uh, I suppose we looked at you know one of the we looked at the other big studios around the world and if you look at Abbey Road a big part of Abbey Road's business is in corporate functions uh, live to air type programs um, you know if you look at their website they've got a huge uh, part of their business dedicated to events and functions and they, they do all sorts of different things um, so we thought you know um, that if it was if it had a stage and gave us the option of doing those things, that would be a, a really good way of doubling the, the versatility of the studio. Yeah, I, I suppose uh, with the facility, with the stage, uh, it's a perfect opportunity for a band to record a live album. Exactly. Well, that's that's exactly what we're wanting to promote. Um, uh, you know, they, we've got obviously the live facilities uh, in terms of the, the, the PA and so forth, uh, but we've got this whole room which, you know, we can take a split from the stage and record everything through all the nice valve pre's and different things. And, um, and that way, uh, you know, a band could do a really nice intimate concert, uh, but with full production without having to bring it in, you know, and, and sort of reinvent the wheel that's all here. Uh, we've already done things like the, the B-sharp big band in here and we've done large sort of, you know, um, uh, string ensembles and we've done major type bands. And so, yeah, it, it, it gives Melbourne um, back a major studio so that, you know, with the best of everything and the most amazing sounding room and we can do, you know, like up to, you know, sort of fairly decent sized orchestras here. So without that, yeah, Melbourne would be quite lacking. I mean, uh, people would have to go to Sydney or, you know, well, basically Sydney, yeah. yeah. Um, the main room is also a live performance venue now. Um, yep. uh, I guess it was very important for that room to sound great for the audience. Exactly right. We, it's, it was quite a tricky design because we obviously needed it to sound great uh, for an orchestra, but, um, you know, we had very early on the idea that that wasn't going to happen every day and uh, so we really need to make it as multifunctional as possible to make it a you know uh, just possible for us to, to to actually survive so one of the ideas was okay what if we put in a stage and uh, we can use still use it for recording and uh, but we can also have intimate sort of gigs and offer the opportunity for those people to have live recordings. And so far, you know, nearly every one of them that have come have done that and we've filmed it and recorded it, you know, professionally. Um, so that was just part of uh, the pivot, you know, that lots of people have had to make because, uh, as you'd understand, we, you know, there used to be a, a, a larger choice of income streams in this business when uh, we used to do lots of 
CD pressings for uh, for artists who don't want CDs anymore, and with that went artwork which they don't need anymore. And so, um, you know, we've uh, set up an eBay store. Plus, we're doing things like the live shows. Plus, we're doing events here. Um, yeah, so it, it was just very important to make the place as multi-purpose, multifunctional as possible to give us the best chance to survive. Tell me about some of the equipment uh, that you're uh, proud of uh, getting into the studio. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, another thing that we did, I mean, obviously after 37 years, in the 35 years in the business before we started deciding the gear for this, you know, we, we've made a lot of alliances along the way and we've got a lot of favourite gear like every engineer would have. Um, but also during COVID, we, our pivot was to ex expand our eBay store and our sale of, of equipment to other people. We've always done that, but, um, you know, we expanded that because my original, prior to having the studio, I worked for in, in uh, wholesaling of musical gear. So I've always had that connection. So we expanded that and, and we've really taken on those alliances with different brands um, to the point where we're also selling, you know, all the things. So some, because everybody, we often use working with home studios these days, everybody's got a studio. So often people will come in and lo love a piece of gear and they'll go, oh wow, well, I want one of those for my home studio. So that's one way of us working with the home studio market rather than against, you know, rather than going, oh, we hate home studios. We, we want to, uh, you know, be associated with them and work with them. Uh, wherever we can so you know if um if we can also you know be involved in recommending some gear for them or if they love something here then we can supply it but uh, the particular brands that we love we've always loved focus right uh so we have a lot of focus right gear the blue stuff and over there um we recently in more recent times we discovered the the sebatron brand which is actually made in reservoir only a you know a couple of miles away um, by a guy by the name of Sebastian and, and he makes world-class gear but hardly anybody in Australia uses it or has it. Uh, he sells most of it in the US. Um, but, um, you know, so we, we managed to get a lot of Sebatron gear in, and we now use it in all of our studios. Um, we've always loved Universal Audio. Um, you know, everybody loves Universal Audio gear so that's a, a piece in the puzzle. Uh, we really wanted to create a palette of choices and colours for people to use. You know, um, you know, ever since we went away from having one console and having this hybrid type, um, you know, idea, um, we we've um, liked the idea of the, the the mixed palette of you know. So we've got a lot of valve gear here. Uh, we've got a lot of solid state gear with the Focusrite and some of the other things, the Neve and other brands, um, but um, yeah, the Universal Audio and the Sebatron and the TLA, uh, the, the, the Valve stuff. We also have 10 channels of um, a, a, a brand that we've only discovered recently, which is SPL. Uh, so, and that's quite a different beast again, because it's 180 volt uh, rail. So it has an extremely high dynamic range. So it's completely different to all the other gear. So we've got an eight channel unit from them and a two channel unit. So that's great for anything like orchestra or, or classical music where there's huge dynamic range, you know, whereas in rock and roll you tend to compress things and you want to, so the valve, you know, like a valve unit, like a, a thorax or a 610 or something like that is fantastic um, for that fat sort of condensed compressed sound. But if you're wanting full dynamics of a, a violin, for example, in a classical piece, you, you know, the... Uh, the SPL um, uh, channels are fantastic. As an engineer, what are the features of the studio that you enjoy? The, the studio is, um, well, I guess uh, because I'm the, you know, the main engineer, I've been pretty much you know, able to just say how I want it. So it, it's sort of like a dream. Uh, it's like I... Being a person that, you know, for the first 20 years worked with tape, I love the warm audio sounds um, that tape used to give you and you no longer get. So uh, we have a huge range of valve preamps and valve gear. So we record a lot through valve, but then again, in this studio, we've got split 50-50. Uh, so that, you know, you've got the cleaner sounds for orchestras and things like that. But if I'm doing anything sort of like, you know, for, with band wise or anything, I need a really warm bottom end. 
Uh, I've got a ton of Valve gear, which most other studios simply don't have. They have if you've just got a large desk, um, you know, they're, they're not Valve, and then you're pretty much stuck with that sound. And uh, basically what happened was tape was really fat and warm, but it was also not very clean. So you had to have the cleanest, cleanest desk. But once you took the tape away, then it was all just clean, and it was like, ooh. So, as I said, I mean, uh, we use a lot of Valve gear to warm that back up again and get that sort of warm uh, analog type sound when we record. And yeah, so, and obviously being able to design with Paul just all the acoustics and, and it just, yeah, it's a beautiful sounding room. For just about everything we've tried it so far has been a success. You know, we've had, as I said, we've had a big band, we've had strings, we've had, you know, the Black Sorrows doing huge drums in there and everything so far has worked exactly as we planned so it's been very rewarding uh, so what sort of feedback have you had from people who have recorded here recently uh, look you know everybody loves the rooms for starters um, and uh, you know they're fairly luxurious uh, <laughs> and big um, but I mean you know we had a a jazz group in just last weekend and the drummer was the composer uh, as well and and he um uh, tried out our new drum booth in Studio Two, and he said it was the best jet, best drum sound he'd ever had. So you know, and he's been in the business for you know several decades. So you know, that was nice feedback. Um, so often getting those that sort of feedback, and and uh, a lot of people you know obviously love working with Trevor, the, the main engineer here. Um, you know, just just you know people love working with him. So you know, they always comment on that uh, and how easy it is. Um, you know, uh, uh, also people love our pianos. We've got a choice of, you know, great pianos. Uh, we've got a brand new Yamaha grand piano and an older one, which is a bit darker. And so it depends on what style of music you're doing. We've also got um, my old upright pianola piano, which was a piano I learned on as a kid. So that's a hundred year old piano. So, so the choices of pianos are, are, are something that really strikes, uh, you know, an interest with a lot of our customers. Um, a project that uh, you've been involved with from the very start at uh, Studio 52 and now here uh, is Cool Schools, I think into its 26th year? Yes, 26th year. Uh, how's, bit... how's the class of 2023 looking? <laughs> yeah, we've, uh, it's a bit late, uh, later than usual. I mean, we're uh, normally we'd be recording most of it in sort of June, July, August, um, but we've really only done a little bit so far. We're doing most of it this year in August, September, October. Um, so the schools are still a long way behind, are still effect affected by the COVID, you know, break. Um, as, you know, a lot of the music teachers have said to me, you know, they said, gee, we really want to get the kids back in the studio, but, you know, um, I've got 123 solo artists because none of them have ever played together, you know, so we're still having to reassemble ensembles and, and get people used to playing together rather than via Zoom or, or separately. So um, they're sort of reforming all those groups and getting people back in the same room. Um, so that's, that's still dampened our momentum for the project this year. You know, we're probably doing, I think, 15 albums this year, whereas, you know, we were previously doing 35 or 40. So what are some of your proudest moments in recording? Um, look, I think, you know, most of my, the, the things that I've been proud of is, is you know, s giving people, um, you know, helping people find their, bring their dreams or aspirations to fruition, um, seeing young songwriters, you know, hear themselves for the first time uh, properly um, and, you know, even in the, particularly in the Cool Schools project, you know, seeing those responses from parents or teachers, you know, parents realising their kids have a real talent that they previously just thought was a lot of noise in the garage, and then suddenly hearing and seeing their kids perform on stage properly, um, that that's pretty great. Um, obviously, um, when we record 
some really top players. Like, you know, lately we've been blessed by being able to record all the, you know, the top musicians in this new studio and and working with, you know, you work with drummers like David Jones or Darren Farouge or, uh, you know, or, or there's so many good musicians that we've been working with lately. And, um, you know, John McCall on piano and, and so many people. Um, that's, you know, just, being able to to work with those people is is uh, very gratifying. We we hope obviously that it becomes the premier studio in Australia. I know that's a huge <laughs> a huge want, but it's certainly um, technically good enough. It's got everything going for it. It's a beautiful sounding room. Every person we've recorded so far, and we've been pretty lucky that you know it's sort of like very much a build it and they will come, you know, sort of dream. But uh, since we've been here, we've really uh, had some of the absolute top musicians in Australia record here already. And every single one of them has gone, ooh, ah, best studio I've ever recorded in, amazing, ooh, ah. So I think we're well on the way, you know. Everybody that's recorded here has been blown away and loved the space, loved the sound. Uh, so yeah, we, we hope to become the place that people go to. What's the grand plan for Empire Studios? Well, obviously we we built this massive place, so uh, we're sort of like the one of the last big format studios in in uh, still running, and, and it's brand new. So um, I suppose we're we're hoping that there's going to be resurgence in in people making great records and and. Um, maybe record companies investing back in music, which hasn't really been happening for a while. Um, you know, I, I uh, it's like on just this week we had all the studios booked simultaneously. We had Joe Camilleri in here in this studio doing a lot of backing vocals for his new album, and we had all the other studios booked for Cool School. So the whole place was like this hub of activity and creativity all at once, and. I love to see when it's when it's like that. Um, we're also wanting to build up um, the venue side of the business. Uh, you know, we've now got a licensed bar, and we bring in catering and all those sort of things. So, so the ability to do shows, you know, as part of the mix of the business, I think, is an exciting thing. You know, you know, didn't think, never thought before we'd have a venue and a, and a, and a licensed bar. So that's that's an exciting um, addition. And, uh, and and a new side of the business to get involved in. So yeah, you know, and the ability to combine those sort of live um, shows and li and live recordings, you know, and all of that together is is really exciting.